Hello, all you marketers out there. My name is Ian from marketingstrategy.com, and you're listening to another Marketing Strategy Talk. I had the pleasure to sit down with Nick Bennett of Clary. Nick is the head of field marketing and a leading voice on field marketing on LinkedIn right now. And for those of you that aren't too familiar with what field marketing is or why it's super important to organizations, don't worry, we cover that. Uh, we also dove really deep into some of the campaigns Nick has utilized to drive big revenue results for his sales team at Clary. In this marketing strategy talk, Nick walks us through how he's disrupting the field marketing discipline by creative approaches to prospecting like a Star Wars premiere campaign and how he accelerates pipeline with Uber Eats gift cards and masterclass subscriptions. This talk is jam-packed with value and creative marketing ideas. I'm telling you, you're not going to want to miss it. So sit down, get comfortable, throw on the headphones, and let's get to it. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and LinkedIn. Of course, visit us at marketingstrategy.com, where you'll find the most effective strategies for rapid growth for marketers by marketers. Till next time. Nick, thank you so much for joining me on another Marketing Strategy Talk. Hey, thank you for having me and excited to be here. Of course. So I've been uh, following you on LinkedIn for a while and just inhaling your content, and I feel like you're definitely a leading voice in uh, field marketing on LinkedIn. And uh, I just wanted to get you on here and kind of share your knowledge uh, with the world, if that's all right. Yeah, definitely. I'm excited to, to hopefully help out. So um, field marketing, it's kind of a, I don't want to say traditional, but it is kind of like that traditional type discipline of marketing. Um, and on your profile, you, you kind of label yourself as a disruptor. And I've seen kind of what you've done on LinkedIn and I, I completely agree. So give me an example of, of how you're disrupting the field marketing space at Clary. Yeah. So, so I think, you know, field marketing being the front lines, like you need to be looked at as the CMO of your region. You know, are you delivering on your programs? Do you have enough pipeline for the sales team? And so a big thing for, for me is, yeah, you know, we do these, these virtual events as well, just got like everyone else out there. But another thing that that's worked really well is a pipeline deal acceleration program. Um, and just trying to work with sales to pull deals forward because who knows two, three months from now, yeah, the economy might be getting better, but also budgets might be getting cut. Um, mm -hmm. So what can we do to pull those things forward now so that we're securing those deals for the long term? Give me, give me like a tactical example of one of those campaigns that you run at Clary. Yes. Yeah, so something that we did back in Q1 was a pipeline acceleration program. So basically what we did is we partnered with sales. We said, okay, give me all of your early stage opportunities. So we call them S1s, S2s. Mm -hmm. um, and so each sales rep would have, give me two to three contacts per opportunity that were set to close in Q1 or Q2. From there, it was about 311 um, total names. We said, okay, these, this, these are the gift options that we're going to send them. Mm -hmm. A $50 Uber Eats gift card, a $90 masterclass uh, video, which if you haven't taken a masterclass before, definitely do it because they have some awesome classes that you can take. And then the third one was a, uh, a couple of books around sales, marketing alignment, and just kind of revenue organizations in general. Um, and once we kind of got all that information, we, I personally went through one by one and didn't use like a gifting system to, to send these out. I manually purchased all of these and the salesperson gave me kind of a note that they wanted me to send along with the gift. Um, we did it all. We tracked it all manually uh, through Excel and it worked incredibly well. We, um, we actually influenced $37.5 million of pipeline, which wow. is a huge number. Yeah. Um, we, we're able to pull forward about $16 million in close one that we were able to play a part of through this whole program. And I think an important piece was there was no call to action through this whole thing. We just wanted to send something to people to say, basically, Hey, we're thinking of you right now, stay safe. You know, you'll hear from us at, at some point. And I think people really appreciated that. Yeah. Uber eats all the way for me. I, I think, uh, it's a really cool campaign and I've, I've done the masterclass as well. I'm actually subscribed to it. So it's also super, super valuable. So I, I could see how those would be great options. Um, and it's interesting, right? Like it, everybody talks about empathy, empathy, empathy on LinkedIn right now. Marketing needs empathy. And that's, that's one of those really cool instances of like, that's like real life empathy. That's saying, Hey, we're thinking about you. 
I don't want anything in return. I just, I want you to know that we're thinking about you. And exactly. I'm assuming if that much with 37 million in pipeline influenced, I mean, that, if that's, you know, that's a ton of money. So this must have started conversations that then the sales rep can utilize and kind of say, Hey, you know what, we are here for you and have that conversation where it does eventually spill into, Hey, you know what, you know, things are kind of opening up on our end. Exactly. Yeah. And you kind of hit it right on the head, you know, it just kind of opened more doors to different people within the company um, and allowed us to kind of champion a lot of those people that helped us sell up into the accounts that help, were the ones that were ultimately moving the deals forward. Um, and having that relationship with sales um, on the on the fail marketing side, I think is incredibly important. Yeah, let's explore that a little bit. So the relationship with sales. So something that's very misunderstood, I think, from the marketing side, especially new marketers struggle with this is like how important that connection and that collaboration between sales and marketing is. I know this is a cliche topic, but I think it's cliche because everybody talks about it because I don't think anybody really has a good solution for it just yet. Or it's very difficult to get a really solid um, process in place to not only share information with sales, but um, get their ideas, incorporate it into marketing, feed that information back to sales. So how have you done that successfully at uh, Clary? Uh, and again, I think something worth mentioning, you're, you're remote right now too, and you've been fully remote for a couple of years, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, when you don't see people every day as well in person, yeah. it makes it a little bit more challenging. But I think the big piece of it, it, it comes down to relationships um, and informing those relationships. Like it's, it's a fine line that you have to walk between sales and marketing. And it's like, you don't want to be looked at as someone in corporate marketing that's throwing, you know, information down these salespeople throats. You want to be looked at as like, you know, kind of like we talked about before, like the CMO of your region, you want to be the one that's a trusted advisor. So information that's coming from HQ, you're, it's going to you, you're relaying it to the sales team. Mm -hmm. Information that the sales team's seeing from the field, you're taking that, relaying it back to, to the marketing team at HQ. And then they're incorporating a lot of that into other um, different types of campaigns that they're running or different types of, of, of you know, content, things like that. And I think being able to have that two way street is, is incredibly valuable. Yeah. It's a feedback loop, right? I mean, they give you feedback on a campaign. They give you ideas on campaigns. You launch the campaign. You can also measure it. And it's just constant sharing of information. I think that's, that is exactly what you said works. I think better than most is it's collaboration at the end of the day. And if you can't reach across the aisle and I'm sure you're having calls with your salespeople every single day, uh, text Slack, right? I mean, the whole nine yards. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm constantly, you know, I'm talking to them, like you said, email, Slack, text. When we were able to get together, there's, there's actually about five of us that are in the Boston area. We actually would get together a couple times a month and just kind of hang out. And it's like, you know, I'm at the point now where, you know, I'm friends with a lot of these sales reps, like, especially the ones that are more local, like we hang out, we do things together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think at the end of the day, that can only help strengthen that relationship. Yeah. And, and I think um, that's important too, is that human connection. Uh, and that's also something that marketers underestimate is how important it is to connect at a human level and not just like, Hey, this is the campaign we're pushing out. This is, you know, what I expect of you. It's, it's making that human connection and, and really enjoying working together. And I think it's, organizations that have figured that out have incentivized marketing teams and sales teams to work together. And it sounds like Clary has done that. I'm sure you're aligned on revenue, right? Instead of MQLs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think it's important to know, like, so we've created a revenue revenue organization. So like it's, it's basically everyone in the boat, sales, mm -hmm. marketing, CS, like enablement, like we all play a, a, a very important role to to the revenue organization like it's not just the sales team it's not like oh i'm a sales athlete you want to be a master of revenue at the end of the day and like that pulls from a bunch of different functions to be successful exactly exactly so i want to shift gears a little bit so you had one campaign uh that i think you posted on recently um that really stood out to me and i'm not sure if it was at clary or not but it was something to do with star wars can you walk us through that campaign and kind of what you did there? Yeah, definitely. So, so it was it, it was it clear. So it was the, the first time I've tried this was, was a couple of years ago when, when the, I forget what Star Wars it was, but 
it came out, it was the huge big thing, everyone yeah. loved it. And so I said, okay, I want to reach a thousand people and not just like a thousand random people because anyone could do that. Um, <laughs> I want to reach a thousand people in my ICP that are going to be people that either are going to be buyers or that are going to help me champion that, that account. Mm -hmm. And so the day before um, the Star Wars release back in December, I rented out 10 theaters across the U.S., pretty much every major metro. Um, and I ran a, a, a screening of the movie um, for, for, for each theater. And it was at the same exact time, same exact day. And there was so much from the logistical side that went behind it. Like our CEO made a movie. We had um, actually trivia playing as people kind of walked into the theater so they could kind of, you know, learn about revenue, learn about fun Star Wars trivia as well. Sure. Um, I had these Clary branded Star Wars lightsabers um, that people absolutely love. And then we ran a huge social contest, which I think we had over 150 people participate, but if they basically took like the Clary Star Wars like lightsaber, and took a picture and posted on LinkedIn, tagged us using a hashtag, they could get into to win this really cool like Star Wars package that we put together for them. And we had so much amazing feedback from people that were a part of it and that were saying, this is literally one of the best events that I've ever been to. The amount of work that went into to make this successful and then have it all run at the same exact time and literally only have one issue out of 10 theaters um, was huge. And the amount of revenue and pipeline generated from that uh, was probably the largest that uh, largest campaign that I've been a part of across, you know, various companies of doing things like this. That's huge. So I think um, I love, <laughs> how do I tap into an audience of a thousand people? I think that's literally what a marketer asks themselves every single day, right? Like, how do I get that to a broader audience? So that's such a creative way of doing it, man. Really, really good on you. That's, that's super impressive. Yes. Yeah, it was, it, it was fun. And I was just like, the day of, it's like, you know, I was at the one actually in Boston and like, you know, it's West Coast obviously is three hours behind. So it's like, you know, I'm in there, the people in the West Coast are trying to contact me. It's just like, for, for, yeah, I did have help, but for one person to take on that big of a challenge um, was not easy. Oh, man. I imagine. I think uh, <laughs> right now, especially right now, I think hustle uh, definitely pays dividends. Like you said, yeah. packaging or sending them out yourself, buying them yourself on those Uber Eats cards. I think that yeah. that goes a long way. But sometimes uh, it's just it's not physically possible to do everything by yourself. So that's when the team support really does come in handy. Exactly. Uh, and that's, I so love those examples of creative marketing. And I think that's, that's what um, I think somebody like you brings to disrupt the kind of field marketing, the traditional field marketing discipline, right? And I think when most people think of field marketing, it's like physical events, like just a meet and greet or like webinars. And I think things like that, the campaigns that you're running at Clary and other companies, I think that's really the future of field marketing and, and good on you for really pushing the envelope there. Really nice. Yeah. You need to, you need to think outside the box because when you were hired, you weren't hired to, to do status quo. You know, you were hired to, to be remarkable and, and think of creative things and push that envelope. Like you said, um, and you know, anyone can do webinars all day, but is it fun? Is it interesting? And, eh. um, but think outside the box, like who cares if you fail, you fail, like, course correct and, and let's work on it together no one's going to point a finger at you and, and tell you you suck so <laughs> let's hope not right yeah, 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 yeah if so we have bigger problems <laughs> yeah i was gonna say it, it would be probably a, <laughs> a bigger issue there if that actually yeah. does happen so let's dive into working from home so I, I do think that a lot of people need help here specifically right now with the whole global scenario going on uh the situation uh, you've been working from home remotely for, it seems like multiple years. So what are like your top couple tips for people just starting out now? And, and how do you manage the, the work-life balance? Yeah. So I think the, I think one of the biggest things is you need to block time off in the day on your calendar that you won't take any meetings and you need to just, so for me, I go for a walk or I have a two-year-old daughter. So I go and spend time with her because daycare is closed right now as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and just being able to, you know, step away 
and not just have that that fatigue that you're just sitting there constantly looking at a screen all day is yeah. incredibly important. Um, I think another piece is is having kind of a dedicated work area. So like I have an office and like I know that's my spot every single day. And like, you know, even if it's just like a, a table in a corner, but if that's where you go every day, I think that's important to know. So you're not just sitting on the couch or sitting in your bed because over time you'll just be like, oh, you know, do I really just need to to get up or can I just sit here and do nothing? Um, I think that's important. And then also just still making sure that you have like a work schedule. So like for me at five o'clock or even a little earlier, like 4.30, I will completely shut down. I'll go spend time with my daughter for about two hours, two and a half hours till she goes to bed. Um, and then if there's anything that I missed, I'll, I'll check it after that. But I make sure that I completely shut everything off, Slack, mm. emails, phone calls. No one's going to bother me from five to seven, basically. Yeah. Uh, and that's been really helpful, too. I think that's uh, the biggest piece that most people are struggling with is how do you draw that line? Um, and I am just as guilty as the rest. I have two young kids. Uh, and um, it's tough, man. I think you're trying to work, you're trying to manage, uh, obviously, your spouse's job as well. She's working uh, part time, but she did have a full time job, it does have a full time job, but it's difficult to kind of say, all right, you're going to work, you know, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm going to work, you know, as much as I can during those little slots, I have a little bit more flexibility, because I'm in tech, she's in biotech, so she has to actually go to the lab. So there are times where I have to kind of pitch in and uh, obviously take the kids and, and watch them, uh, which has been fantastic. I wouldn't trade it for the world, actually. I think that is it's a terrible situation uh, globally, but I do think we'll look back on this time for the people that have been fortunate and, you know, really look back fondly on the, the time that you got. Uh, it's, it, well, it is a gift. I mean, getting this extra time with your kids at home, um, it's, it's one of those things that I know I'll remember for the rest of my life. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that, that's a great, great tip. Yeah, I was gonna say I couldn't I couldn't agree more with you. Like it's just you know at times it's stressful having a two year old scream yeah. outside the door while you're on like meetings. Yeah. yeah, but it's like you know what are you gonna do? Complain that your kid wants to spend time with you? So. <laughs> exactly. There's worse things in this world, I'm sure. Yeah. So um, all right, let's get into kind of the closer here. So what are your uh, maybe top two favorite marketing books? Yeah, so that's, that's a good question. So one of my, I would say, I, I don't, I, I, I probably should do more reading than I actually do. I'm a big, the way that I kind of engage in content is, is a, a lot through LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I watch a ton of YouTube videos, but mm -hmm. one that was really interesting to me is, um, this is marketing. You can't be seen until you learn to see from Seth Godin. Nice. Um, so that was something that was super interesting to me. Um, it, cause if you think about it, you know, marketing is all around us, like marketing mm -hmm. plays a, a role in pretty much everything. Um, but like I said, you know, I should probably do more reading than I do, but it's just, I find, I, I find the way that I learn best is through just other people's content. Um, it's helped me way more. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and uh, you're not the first person to say YouTube. Um, I've had a couple of people like, I just go to YouTube. There's so much good information on there, especially yeah. Seth. I, I don't think you can ever go wrong with anything he produces. I think it's, it's ahead of its time. We'll look back on Seth and, uh, and his kind of work and his body of work and just be, it's going to be held up there with some of the greats. So I, I completely agree. There is just so much free information. Uh, and granted a good marketing book is, is fantastic too, but I, I, I also find myself just scrolling YouTube and honestly, LinkedIn, I, like you said, it's, there's so much valuable information on the internet right now that um, you could just do that and be fine. So Definitely. speaking of LinkedIn real quick, um, any tips for uh, anybody listening? So you obviously have a pretty solid personal brand. Um, what are kind of like the, let's get tactical too, right? Is it like, do you comment on 10 posts a day? Do you, do you try to post once a day? Like, what are you actually doing to develop that personal brand? Yeah. So something that, that I've done. So for the last about 90 days, I've posted, I would say five days a week, sometimes on an occasional Saturday, but I try to stay away from the weekends unless I have something really important to say. Um, and plus I've seen the engagement kind of drop back a little on the weekends, mm -hmm. um, but literally posting every single day. And I try to only post once a day. Um, and just 
engaging with the people that are actually commenting. And I do, I do get a good amount of comments, just making sure that you're kind of responding to those. Um, and then as I kind of scroll through LinkedIn, you know, multiple times per day, just engaging with content that's, that's relevant to me. I know you post a lot of great things yourself. So like things that I find interesting that I can relate to, I make sure to obviously like those, but not only like it because that, that can only go so far or right. uh, react it. It's also commenting on it. And then, you know, you engage in that conversation and you never know, you know, networking is incredibly important. You never know at what point you're going to need someone else's help. Um, and I, that's one of the biggest things from, from a personal brand. I've always thought like, you know, I've met so many brilliant marketers through this so far. It's, uh, you know, I've had people reach out to me, sending me messages saying, oh, you know, your content is really great. Thank you. I've lost my job due to COVID. Um, you know, is there anything, you know, ideas or suggestions that you can give to me and i've just had conversations with them like I, I always tell people like reach out to me if you want to have a conversation and like bounce ideas off of me figure out what you want to do next in life like let's do it like at some point who knows i may need the same thing um and, and being able to pay it forward now i think is incredibly important i am so with you on that i had um an instance today where somebody reached out and uh, I tried to give them the best advice I could. Uh, they also lost their job due to COVID. And it was like, hey, try this, this, and this. This worked well for me. Um, but you underestimate, I think that's, that's my biggest thing, is like I underestimated how uh, solid and connected the community is. Um, yeah. Everybody's trying to help everybody else out. I think everybody gets that now that's on LinkedIn. And it's not always just about me, me, me. It's, it's more the people that do well, I think yourself included, they're just trying to help. They're trying to give value. Um, so that, yeah, I, th I think spot on there for sure. Um, and yeah. I think th the one other thing I'd maybe add is, uh, my, uh, my one hack quote unquote, and it's not a hack, it's a terrible hack and I fully admit <laughs> it, but, um, getting connected or at least following some of the, the more, uh, high profile marketers, like we were talking earlier, um, Dave, uh, Chris Walker, um, things like that. And, uh, and kind of trying to comment on their post as early as you can, because then it gets more, more eyeballs on it. So that's, that's one thing I found that works pretty well too. Yeah. And I, I would kind of, like you said, that, that that's a perfect thing. And we were chatting before kind of, before we, we started doing this, but like, there's so many sales people that are, are looked at as kind of influential leaders. Yeah. And literally like, I could think of like 30 off the top of my head and they have special things for salespeople, but like, what about all the marketers yeah. out there? Like, yeah. Where do we turn? Like, like you said, there's Dave, there's this Chris Walker, but like, I can count like five of them on my hand and like, like, what about after that? There should be so many more because marketers are the brilliant ones behind all of these ideas. And it's mm -hmm. just getting them to like socialize these things. And maybe they're afraid, maybe they don't want to build their personal brand. Maybe they're too busy, but like, I know for me, I would love to hear from more marketers. Well, they, uh, they exist on marketingstrategy.com. So if anybody's listening to this, please go to the website and check it out. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> terrible self-promotion. I'm sorry. <laughs> So, um, all right, all right. We have this thing that we do called word association, right? So picture that you're leaning back in this leather uh, psychiatrist chair, and I'm gonna say a couple words to you, channels, tr strategies, whatever it is, and give me like a two to three word kind of in your head what you think of it. Okay. You ready for this? Ready. All right, field marketing. Um, front line, CMO of your region or territory yeah. and front Beautiful. lines. Yeah. Facebook ads not as a, not as relevant anymore okay physical events something that will come back but won't be as used before this whole thing happened i think um i think virtual is here to stay but what, mm. will, what will the balance be webinars <laughs> <laughs> Something that, that, that's played out way too much. Um, and when people say it's a discussion, when it's really a webinar, um, I have a huge issue with that. If it's a webinar, tell me it's a webinar up front. Exactly. Uh, LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn is the new space for personal branding um, and just getting your name out there in networking. Sales enablement incredibly important for not only sales, but I would say a lot of functions within, within a company or, or a revenue organization. MQLs. 
something that should be thrown away. Direct mail. Direct mail is making a huge comeback. I'm actually a huge fan of direct mail. Um, but how do you, how do you, how do you get, get people to give your, their home addresses when everyone's working from home? So digital direct mail, maybe right now. There you go. Nice one. And Clary. So Clary, taking control of your revenue, um, forecasting with confidence, um, taking your revenue insights and illuminating those and improving your execution for your entire revenue organization. Fantastic. Nick, it's been a pleasure. Is there anything else that you want to uh, plug? Where can people find you? Yeah. So you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, that's, I'm pretty much there every single day. So definitely, you know, drop by, send me a note. I accept pretty much all requests unless you're a person that pitches me two minutes after with no personalization to it, then you get the boot. But um, yeah, definitely send me a note. Happy to connect with everyone and uh, look forward to, to learning more from people. Great. Thanks a lot, Nick. Thank you.